it's Sarah. I've been looking through a lot of magazines and different things for inspiration and I came up came across this stamp in the co collage couture book by Julie Nutting and it's just um, like a block stamp that she made probably with foam or something like that um, so I've kind of doodled out a little but I also was looking through my um, Somerset Studios magazines and stuff <clears throat> but I'm um, gonna carve this out of the speedball speedy carve I have it and I figured I would um, do that so all I've done and I started doing it, I thought why not turn the camera on I used a baby food jar lid to get my circle because I kind of wanted that to be proportionate um, and then I just made a circle on the inside and I've divided into quarters and now I'm gonna do um, I don't know my math isn't good half a quarters <laughs> divided the quarters into quarters anywho don't be don't hate on my math so I used a ruler but I'm just free handing those lines okay and that one had eight petals I'm just gonna make one two three four five six seven I am gonna make eight petals I'm going to divide again in the center. I'm going to put a little circle here. And this is just to keep my proportion of the petals. See if I'm... When I um, carve, I'm going to use my Sharpie to uh, make the lines that I want to carve. But I wanted this distance here. And... I'll show you why in a minute. I'll show you. Okay. So this is getting carved out, this circle. Um, my petals are going to be... Alright, I'm going to start using the Sharpie because my petals are going to be kind of from this to here. That's the top of the petal. And then I'm going to go down here here I, I really want it rounded but here's the thing wherever there's blue marker I'm carving it out so this will all won't be carved this will all that makes you know good English so I want to leave a space between the petals so there's a space there I think I'm gonna carve that out um, yes, because if it's going to be a space, it has to be carved. So that will be carved. So it's not, let's see. And we'll see how it goes. Listen. <clears throat> so everything that has this blue green marker on it is going to be getting carved. I just said that, didn't I? I'd really like it to be more rounded. There really is a trick to this. It isn't as easy as it looks to me I don't know because it has to do with um, the negative oh see that was wrong what are you doing Sarah coloring uh, the negative and the positive of a stamp so oops this is what I want to color in between and then here and here and here so that's what I'm gonna go with all right let me get my carving tool. <clears throat> Ready carve. This is speedball. Um, I'll be right back. I gotta turn my fan on. All right, and then I'm gonna use my tonic scissors and just cut this out. I think I'm. All right. haven't done this in a while 
but what is going on? There we go. It isn't hard. So, oops, I might have gone a little close to the edge there. Let me think. No, because I, I'm going to cut that away. All right, so basically I'm going to want something to hold on to, but all right, I'm going to get this out of here and this. So I'm going to go around in a circle. And I like to move the speedy carve and hold my blade steady. It seems to be easier that way for me to make a, a concise cut. Oops, I missed a piece. But see how easy it is to tell what you've carved when you put that Sharpie on there. I got a little swirly. I kind of like leaving that there if it shows up. Then I'm going to go in this little area. Maybe make it a little bigger. Um, I like the idea of using a hand carved stamp in your art journal and in your, um, what? Yeah, I know. I heard her. Kirby wants to go for a walk and she's waiting for Matt to take a shower. She's waiting outside the bathroom door. <laughs> Anywho, um, so using, actually there are, um, copyright laws when it comes to stamping and I find it so ironic, but Anywho, um, if you carve your own, they can't say, you know, it's copyrighted. I drew it. Anywho, I, I get flustered when it comes to that stuff because I love to share. But I see, I do understand that they're making a living, so that makes sense. Um, and we'll have to stamp this out and see what it looks like. But I'm going to go in between, let me think, all this has to get carved. I do have in here, there's like other blades. So there's much wider blades and let's see. Uh, I like the one I'm using, but I think I'll switch it to this one when I um, go around the outside edge. So let me finish using this one for a sec. I'm just going to go in between. So I'm going to go right down to the center and I'm going to go, I want to curve it to give the petal a curved edge. So curved. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to follow the curve and push it straight down. And look, as I push harder, it gets deeper. And you know me, I have a problem with being gentle, so I get gouges. But I feel like I'm getting a good a good shape. I just want to make that petal kind of curvy. And that's good. I'll come back with that other blade and finish the edges. I, I don't know if I want to leave that swirly thing. It's kind of a happy accident, but it wasn't my intention. And then I might make an art journal page. have to go pick up Maya at school, but um, I should have time. Ooh, my hand slipped off the thingy. One more. Uh-oh, I'm pushing too hard.
but I think we're going to be good here. So where else do I want to make a... I might as well just go around here. And finish shaping the petal. Although I, I think the bigger, the wider blade would have been able to do it too. But I have this in my hand. So that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully I'm getting a nice shape. We'll see. We shall see. So you can do, if you have a cute little thing that you like to doodle, that's kind of your signature shape thing. You can make a, a stamp out of it and use that. So this is a little tricky. I always have a little trouble with this. Getting it loose. I don't know. Oops, see, I take the whole thing off instead of just loosening it. Oh dear. Oh dear. There's another piece in there too. This is the piece that goes up and like um, grabs the bleed. So it goes this way and this way. And then I want to put this in and this has like a a scoopy so this is the side that you're supposed to put in and there's like a little you can see there's a little gap between those two pieces and then you tighten it up that looks good oh this has a five on it just in case you cared this has a two so I use the two now I'm just gonna do the five just because it's so much wider maybe it'll save me some time oh yeah look at that I can get a much bigger chunk. I'm just going to go all around the outside. And then, whoops, I want to make that go away. And then we'll have to stamp it out. I think I'm going to stamp it in my art journal. You can cut yourself. I mean, these are blades, and as hard, as rough as I am, I wouldn't be surprised if I just, you know, gouge myself. So be careful. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't do it like me. Be careful. Maybe pushing it away from me is probably a good idea, too which I'm doing pretty good at that right now. All right. Oh, see, I just, I just cut my mat. <laughs> it's hard, it's rough being me. All right. I'm hoping this is gonna be super cute. All right, and then I'm just gonna use my scissors again and, um, cut off the edge edge once I clean this up a little bit more hopefully it's good alright Anything that sticks up will get ink on it. So you just want it to be as smooth as you can. Looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. And I can't really use this one. This is way too thick to go back down into those channels. So I'm just going to have to see what it looks like. So let me get some stamp. I mean some ink. And some paper. I don't know where my ink is, guys, so. I'm going to do it with green. Look at this green. Cactus green by Stays On. Looks pretty good, right? Oops, you can't see it. 
There it is. It looks like an orange almost. Oh, <laughs> I just chucked it. I like it, but I kind of think I do want to get that out of there. That middle piece. I just, it wasn't, I wanted it to be empty in there. And then you can see too, like right here, there's green. So you can carve it away and clean it up, clean up your stamp because you can see where the ink is coming off on your paper. I like it a lot. All right. So we did that. So I'll be back and I'm going to make an art journal page. Be right back. All right, I pulled out my Julie Nutting stamps because I have them. So I have all of these stamps. These are um, card, card kit, kit stamps, right? Um, they're smaller. I have the doggy, I have wings, I have a boy. These are all probably the first ones that came out. So I don't have any of the new ones. I have the face stamps, which I did not like. They don't stamp very well. I don't like the photopolymer they use. This is called a tag pad. It's watercolor paper. Never used it. I also have the paper pad. Uh, sorry, I have a lot of stuff on my desk at the moment. Where is it? Um, 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 it's called Blush. I just had it, literally. Oh my gosh, here it is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Julie Nodding, it's called Buff, not Blush. But it basically is six different papers that are kind of a skin tone color. Lots of different various skin tone colors. So I've already gone ahead and stamped out three different girls on three different skin tone colors. And I've cut them out because this is going to be my focal piece for our um, art journal page. I'm going to use this stamp in the background. I did, I took the wings out, but I think these are a little big for these girls. Actually, it wouldn't, wouldn't look bad on her. Just wanted to do, because I'm going to fussy cut their clothes. So I fa I just went and uh, got a couple of stamp, I'm sorry, paper pads. Because I'm going to fussy cut. So like, say you just have this one. It's called Bella Rouge. It's a 6x6 six six inch paper pad. And then it's all color coded to, to go together. So you know that if you put... You know, there's grays, pinks, black, and white. So this would all play together if I wanted to make her outfit in those colors. But I also grabbed the Time Traveler's Memories, which is a Prima pad. Um, I actually was just going to use this for hair color because I saw a brown in here, I think. I don't know. One of these had a brown. Um, but you can use any paper pad to do your clothes because it'll play together. All the colors in there will play together. Um, this this is just one of my favorite. I think I was going to use the hair from here. There's a brown in here. This is a Kang Company paper stack. Like I like to use something like that for the hair or this because it has like lines in it and it has variations in color. It's not just a straight color. And I might use this one. This is one of my favorite. I've bought this like three times, and this one is a new one. Um, but I also pulled this one because I'm going to do a different art journal page that I was inspired by looking through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the big bird as my focal image like this. So I'll probably cut him out of here. And then I'll use a different piece of paper in the background. I'm going to do collage and like using some of the, anyway, it, this will all play together. So I'm going to work on that, something like that. So I'm, I'm planning on, I'm going to leave these on my desk. Um, 
But I wanted to give you a tip when you're fussy cutting out the doll. Now I use the flesh tone color for my base. So these are just their skin. But the rest of the paper I cut is going to go on their clothes. So it's like a paper doll, right? So like for her, for instance, I'm not going to fussy cut out all this. Um, all I make sure about is her legs and her arms. When I go around the clothes, um, I don't, I kind of even go a little bit in. Because that way when you're putting your clothes on top, it doesn't have to be exact. And you will get, so like, I'm not even going to go around that sleeve. I don't know if you know what I mean, but when you are gluing your clothes onto her, your clothes will overlap. The clothes, like none of the underneath stuff will show. So that's how I like to do it. It's just easier that way. When I cut her skirt out, it will have the trim on it. But for right now, I don't cut the trim out. It just saves me the time of being exact and making sure that um, it mat is matching. And like I will cut off, actually, yeah, I'm going to cut off the ribbon because I can um, draw the ribbon on. And this could be hair color for her. And this could have been hair color for her. So you can always recycle out these papers too. So I'm going to continue cutting out. And I just wanted to show you, I love these Cutter B scissors. And I'm going to cut out this little inside part of her arm. So you just kind of stick the scissors in and just start cutting toward where you want to go. But the, these are very good for getting in these little tiny nooks and cranny places. Um, I don't want to cut her arm off. But again, see how there, the sleeve goes out a little? I'm not worried about that right now. When I cut the sleeve out of the pattern paper that I'm going to use, I will be much more careful and get an exact, I'll show you, I'll show you later. So right here, up against her body, I don't have to be careful. Up against the vest, I don't have to be careful. Because the vest, when I glue it on, I'll have enough to glue on there. Um, the hair, I kind of get close to the edge, but again, you want the underneath part, so I'm not going to have the curl. I don't need the curl. I don't really need this. I'm filming right now, Matt. I'll be right there. I don't really need that. I mean, this is the way I do it. You don't have to do it. If it makes more sense to you to follow the line, it, that, see how I cut that off? I don't care about this fringe because when I cut the fabric color out, so the dress color out of the paper, that will all be really fussy cut out perfect. So I will show you when I get to it. I probably won't do the cutting on camera, but I will do the gluing on camera. And I'll show you what I mean, how much easier it is to um, So like for her hair, I might use a piece of this for her hair. I just think it would look pretty. So I'm going to take that stamp. I got to go get Maya. So this is what happens. I always get very in, invested in a project and then it's like I got to go. All right. So where is she? Of course, I can't find her now. She's got to be here, guys. This isn't her. I think I'm going to put her in my um on my page, though, because I really like her. And this isn't her. But she could have light colored hair. Let's put, make this. So here's what you would do. Um, here, oh, here she is. Here's my little girl. So I would take this. I actually like it on her. I want to do her. This is a Fiskars stamping block. And it just happens to be the biggest. So I'm just inking up her head right now. And I'm going to take a big piece of this, and hopefully her hair will fit on here. And I am going to stamp just her hair onto here. And just worry about 
when I cut this out, her hair, I'm not cutting her face, so look. I'm cutting off her face. And I just want to get, now I'm going to be as precise, whoops, be as precise as you want to because when we fit this over, all right, I got to go. Oh dear, yeah, I got to go. I'll come back when this is cut out and I'll place it on here. It might be a little too light, but I kind of like it. All right, I'll be back. 